What's going on everyone? Sam Fabian here along with Sarah Ahern from Cool Meadows Motorsports. Today we're going to be taking along with us as we install cruise control on our 99 Kenworth T300. So, what we're going to be using today, this is not in any way factory components from Kenworth. It's going to be very much aftermarket, done on the cheap. Reason being, I was searching like crazy to try and find <clears throat> used cruise control switches or harness through companies like Vanderhag online or local salvage yards. But long story short... Couldn't really find anything, so what I decided to go ahead with was piecing together a setup from a couple parts on Amazon, a couple parts from a local truck stop, and uh, seems to be that I should be able to put this all together, all said and done, for right around 22 23 bucks. So, what we have is the first piece, and these are the, this is what it's going to look like all said and done. So... You have your cruise control on off and then you're going to have your momentary switch here for set and resume which that's the only from what i could tell on the wiring diagram i don't believe this model has excel and coast i believe it's just a set and resume on a kenworth this age model year so what i did first off was i went to the local truck stop and stopped in, stepped into their chrome shop and found this backing plate here cruise control it's got the labels this is originally this plate is set up for a freight liner but i felt it matched the switch panel that we have on our kenworth better besides the fact that it's stainless and not uh, black labeled switches so then i went to amazon ordered a single on off and then a, I believe this would be known as a three position momentary switch. So this is the one you're gonna use for your resume and set. And this guy, your cr cruise on off. Then each one came with a nice rubber switch cover. Um, up in the air if I'm gonna use that yet or not, all the other switches on the dash are black, so I might end up using this to match, but we'll see how it looks on the when I get everything mounted up on the switchboard. The harness on the truck, what I'm going to show you shortly, is a four-wire harness. Uh, the coloration on this plug is not going to match. That's going to be one of the other downsides, but it's four-wire. I'll be able to convert the plug that's on the truck to this. And this is a nice weather pack from yet again from Amazon. Just a couple bucks. They come in a kit. I ordered. I think it came with five or six of these plugs for four or five bucks. So I'm going to show you guys what it looks like behind the dash and show you the harness where it taps in and explain a little bit about why I'm able to just do a little quick wiring setup versus having to wire it to the ECU program, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So I'll show you that next. All right, so we're up front of our T300. As you can tell, I ripped the dash apart already. Just trying to clean up some excess wiring. It was kind of a mess back there from the previous owners. So, But you get the gist of what we're trying to accomplish. Obviously, you can tell there's our auxiliary gauges to the left. Our main gauges will be in the front and center here, along with our warning light panel across the top speedometer tachometer 
Then our panel we're after is right here in the middle, which would house our radio and outfitter switches such as horn, electric versus air, uh, windows, um, air ride dump, or engine brake, yada, yada. And as you can tell, there's that panel right there. And that's the one we're gonna be working with. But before I get started on that, our Kenworth, and I'm not exactly sure if all of them are like this, but ours in particular came pre-wired for cruise control. And I just happened to find the plug back here in the dash. It's a four prong plug, looks like so. And as you can tell, get focused in here, labeled cruise control. So four wire plug, one's gray and orange. Then you have an orange and brown, an orange and green, and an orange and red. Your gray and orange is your ground. Your other three are the inputs to the ECU to tell it what you want to activate, whether it be cruise on, cruise set, or cruise resume. Simple as you provide ground to one of the other oranges and it's going to activate each function. So orange and brown, which I believe is that guy right there. If you give that ground, it's going to turn your cruise control on. If you give your orange and green cruise control or ground, I'm sorry. If you send ground to orange and green, that's going to set your speed. And then if you give ground to orange and red, that would be your resume function. So we know how it's wired. We know how each function is. We just got to set it up. Unfortunately, what I'm going to have to do is I'm probably going to have to cut this plug off to wire our plug on just because I never was able to find the harness for this plug. Then we'll wire in mount our switches to our switch panel which i'm probably going to put right in here and that should be it so first step we're going to wire our new female end of the plug to the chassis harness obviously the wires don't match, so I'm going to have to figure out a setup on how I can tr try and correlate them to the best of my abilities. But either way, God forbid there's ever a wiring issue in the future, I'll be able to trace the connection back to the original wiring <coughs> right here to diagnose.
So here we go. We got our wires transferred over. We're now hooked into our weather pack plug, which also give us about another four inches or so extension in the wiring. Should make life easy. I don't think I'll have to add any other wire. I think I'll be able to wire the other half of the plug directly to the switches and uh, be good to go, but we'll see. Might be beneficial just to give myself a little extra space for when I pop that panel off. But All right, now we'll move over to the workbench with the, the radio panel and do the second half of this job. All right, so we're sitting on our bench here or in this case, still in the T300, but ours just happens to be a partially converted uh, RV or toy hauler, tote or home, whatever you want to refer to it as. Here's our plate. Pull the switches back out. We're gonna go ahead and figure out how, where we're gonna want to mark mount this on our main panel. I'm thinking something like that. Obviously, the previous owner went and randomly drilled holes through this panel. He had a random switch here that was wired to absolutely nothing, and then the indicator light, which was wired to absolutely nothing. Might be able to reuse that guy, but it just sucks. I'm going to have this gaping hole right here in the middle, along with these two, which I think were originally for the factory radio. Not positive, but I'm going to go ahead, get that guy aligned there. I'm going to use a square, kind of this is tough, get my square reset. that like that lined up go ahead put some marks get my two sloppy Sloppy little marks there. Now just to confirm, it's gonna tuck in right below the switches on the back side, right about here, right alongside our dump valve for our air suspension. And then I believe I found that a 15 30 second drill bit is the closest size for the diameter of the thread on our switch. Go ahead and mount that up in the drill. Drill some holes. All right, so we got both our holes drilled. As you can tell. Now you notice it's got burrs all over the edge of, edges of it. This is pretty nice and easy cheap tool known as a deburring tool a little round blade on the end you see I've used mine pretty good and they could be found for a couple bucks at Harbor Freight Amazon Home Depot but for when drilling holes through metal just take it and wrap it around the edges like so and it's a nice little chamfer on the hole you drilled, it's silky smooth. No more burrs, nothing to get caught on. Little tech tip. Like I said, they're only about three or four bucks. And you could hear it. Sounds like a maraca. It comes with a couple extra blades inside in the bottom. Worthy investment. That way you're not 
Some guys like to use like a, a big chamfer bit and just run it in, yada, yada. This is, I find this to be, especially on an aluminum panel like this, it's a little more clean, better looking. So now confirm our plate. Looks pretty darn good. We're gonna go ahead and Probably get our switches mounted up. Let's see how that looks. Remember, you're going to want your single pole switch over here, and I believe that's called two pole or three way. Long story short, you got two on offs, and it's a momentary, so it returns to center, spring loaded. Where this one is a single throw and it stays put. That's your on, that's your off, that's your set, that's your resume. Now we got it mounted. Go ahead and wire it up all right so i pulled up the wiring diagram for you guys and just give you a quick example of what we're going to be recreating in our physical wiring so we got our ground here as you can see in the diagram black and orange this is coming into our momentary switch which controls our cruise set and cruise resume so obviously as you can see from the switch diagram click one click the other and they'll head out the wiring to the ECU then we're also going to send the ground wire to our single pole switch which is our cruise on and off and as you can see the diagram on connects over to here, cruises on, off, throws back, breaks the connection, cruises off. Simple as that. So we're going to create one wire coming off the plug that's going to spider out into two and you'll have a ground going to each switch and then the other three will connect individually to their proper locations. I'm going to also attach, if I can, a link to this diagram for those who need it in the comments or just simply paste it in the end of, end of the video for everyone. That's what we're going to be recreating with the wiring is what we'll step into next. So, that being said, the common denominator is that ground has to connect to both of these switches. So I'm gonna to have to have two ends to this guy to go here and to the center of this one. And it's a pretty simple idea we're gonna do here. Just gonna strip this guy back. Go a little bit longer. All right, then I have another black wire here. going to strip back a little bit as well like so and then this is where the OCD guys that are all about soldering are really going to hate me 
but I just usually twist the two together. Okay. And I got one of my flat blade connectors. You can see it in there. Now these are completely encased in heat shrink, which I like because it keeps them from contacting anything else. It's your heat shrink end. This is your blade end. Slide that on in. I usually give it a nice little twist to make sure it's in all the way. And we could go ahead and crimp it. Hope you guys don't mind. You might be hearing my heater in the background, but it's also 20 degrees outside, so I'm going to leave that running. That, and then now you want to make sure, just because I have these connectors, you only want to, you can actually shrink both ends of this. But you only want to do the one that the wire is on. There it is. So now, you got your plug, your input, and then we're going to go ahead and clip this like this, put another end connector on it, and that'll be your two ground connectors going to each plug. So those are your two ground connectors. So basically what it's going to look like is when the switch is connected, we have that guy on this one. This guy going to your center pole. Ow, a little hot on the momentary switch. So there's your ground feed. Give you a better idea. Okay. Again, everything here is working on a ground circuit, a grounded circuit. Now, for your on off the feed, if I'm not mistaken, cruise on is blue so this guy you're going to want to connect to the other end of your on off switch i'm not going to connect it yet just because it's still a little hot that's your cruise on and then you're going to want to connect your red and yellow for your resume and set. There's your harness. On, off, cruise set, cruise resume. Okay. Now, go ahead and unplug it for my example switches, and I'll show it to you plugged into the back of the switch panel. Let's get our grounds I'll start with the other guys so you can see better so our ground for our the far switch is the momentary switch which is our cruise set resume set is plugged in and then we'll finish with the resume on the bottom boom one two three so that switch is set and then pick up the second ground mm, come on 
to our on off. Boom. You have it. Got a plug. Be able to slip the radio. Let me go to mount this panel back in. Get my prop out of the way here. Got to mount this panel back in. Plug it in as it goes. Good to go. Not exactly factory, but. On the outside, all said and done, give a little buff on that plate there. And the switches look pretty good. So, that's pretty much it, guys. I'll uh, show you what it looks like real quick when it's all buttoned back up in the dash. But other than that, I'm just going to be plugging this guy back into the plug when the panel goes back in. And she's all done. All right, so if you can hit listen in, I fired the old girl up for you. Get to throw a rev. See the oil pressure spike out. It's got mainly good oil pressure. But just to prove to you that the cruise control's working, mind you, I just threw this one panel back in. I didn't bother putting the instrument cluster back in and all that. So here's our indicator light. A little bit of a glare with this foam, but it's on. Now, for those of you who are familiar, you could also put your truck on high idle with the, res the set or resume. So, you hear it revving up. Rev it down. Confirming that everything's functioning properly. And back off. Just like that. May not be factory. I think it doesn't look half bad on there. Nice little label plate. Fits in decently. So let me know what you think, uh, post up, tried to explain it the best I could on the video here. If you got any future suggestions or tips, tricks you want to throw at me, please feel free. Otherwise, uh, be sure you like and subscribe and uh, stay tuned for some more stuff.